Guess what? I am here with a basketball. Why am I doing a video with a basketball? It is because I'm here to talk to you about March Madness and using March Madness in your classroom. This is great for ages second, third, fourth, fifth grade. Um, they really get into the sport of basketball and there's really low prep because all of these activities that I'm going to talk about today, you can do with things you already have in your classroom. You can do it with a trash can and a piece of crumpled up paper or you can bring a basketball hoop in. There's so many ways to incorporate March Madness into your curriculum to keep students engaged. You can also use highly rigorous activities during this time so students are learning a ton all while staying engaged on the March Madness theme. Now I'm going to share with you something that you can do for reading in March Madness, something you can do for math in March Madness, um, a book tournament that you could do, and some extra ideas. So all of these are just little ways to incorporate March Madness into your curriculum. Um, I think this is a great way to review all of the skills that you have learned throughout the year, practice for your test prep, and all of that stuff. Also, some great read-alouds that you could do along that theme. So, let's jump into it. The first thing I want to talk about is why do you do March? Why would you do March Madness theme in your classroom? A, because a lot of kids will get into the whole basketball theme. A lot of kids in those grade level, levels love sports, love um, activities and things like that. So bringing that theme in will get them engaged. And when you have kids engaged, you can hit them with highly rigorous stuff and they don't even realize how much they're learning or practicing because they're so into the basketball part of it. Okay, so you can use basketball as a way to make kids want to do those rigorous activities that they need to be doing. When are you going to do this? March Madness usually starts at the end of February, ends mid-March, April time. So any time in the month of March, I think is a great time to do it, even at the end of February. All right, let's talk about what kind of things you can do. So one of the easiest things you can do is the book tournament. Now the book tournament, I will share um, a picture in the link down below, but the book tournament is basically you pick however many read alouds, um, like picture books that you want. So last year we did 16 picture books and I made a tournament bracket on the dry erase board and you put all 16 picture books on that bracket. Then you read one picture book a day and the students vote which books move forward until you have the winning book um, of the year. So you can do that with just literally just to get the enjoyment of reading picture books with your students. So that's something that might take 10 to 15 minutes at the end of your day every day. But kids need to be listening to read alouds and this is a great way to bring that into your curriculum. Now say you aren't going to do it with read alouds but you want kids to create book reports on books that they're reading. You could do that same book tournament but have the kids read a chapter book and make a little presentation on it and then we're going to vote by the presentations which um, chapter book is the winner. I prefer the picture book style but you could do it both ways. A tournament is something that could last the entire month of March and it um, can tie in reading into your daily curriculum. Now that isn't necessarily like a rigorous activity, that is more of a way to make sure that you're reading aloud highly interesting picture books to your students. Now let's get more rigorous. The one way to get more rigorous is what I call the book, um, the reading March Madness Challenge. Now how this works is you are gonna wanna do, I have a packet that you can already do that has all the passages typed up, but if you don't wanna use that packet and you wanna use different test prep things that you have, that would be fine too. But basically what you're gonna do is each student or pair of students will become an actual basketball team. So let's say you have a pair of students in their Villanova, and then you have another pair of students that's um, Georgia State. That is their team for this challenge. You're gonna give the test prep reading passage with a set of questions for everybody in the classroom to do, okay? Now you can, again, you can use your own test prep or use the March Madness packet that I have. In the March Madness packet that I have, each passage focuses on basketball. It could be that or you could just use any test prep, right? So the kids, everybody in the class does that test prep activity. Now the two teams that are up against each other in the bracket come forward and if they both have the same answer and it's correct, you're going to start giving them like on the spot questions that have to do with that passage that they read until one person gets it wrong and one person gets it right. And then you have the winner that moves on in the bracket. Okay, so you'll have the question. Now, how do I get everybody else that's not facing each other into this competition? Well, it's something called the MVP of the tournament. So everybody answers every single passage and question, but if you are not competing at that point and you get the question right, you get an MVP point. And then at the end of the tournament, there is an MVP of the tournament and there's a winner of the actual tournament, okay? The winner is coming from 
those face-offs in the bracket, and the MVP is coming from whoever gets the most points throughout the entire um, tournament. Okay, so you're literally just doing a bracket with test prep questions, but there's people facing off each time. Um, usually what I do is the two face off, and if they continue to just answer all the same questions correctly, then they do a shoot off um, with the trash can or with a hoop that I bring in from my house. So that's another way to add a little bit of basketball in there. Okay, so that's an easy way to get students focused on reading passages um, and answering highly rigorous questions and all of that. Um, and it's just that you could do it every single day. You could do one game every day for the month of March. So that's like one test prep practice every single day, one set of passage every single day. And the packet that um, I will link below, there is like one for like text features, one for text structure, and one for every one of the skills that you would do. Um, or you could do like a three-day tournament where you're just doing, you know, game after game after game after game. So you could do it both ways. Um, but it's a great way to bring in test prep. They get to be a real team. I usually let them make like team signs, wear their team colors, things like that. Okay, and the next way is to bring it into math. So math is, a we, there's a math challenge and you can, again, you can make these questions up on your own or you can use the packet that I already have. But basically what I do is you pair up every single day, it's gonna be two students differently against each other. So I have, let's say I have, you know, my two students, let's say Jimmy and J Jayla. Jimmy and Jayla are playing against each other today. They are going to answer all the questions that I give them today. So let's say today we're focusing on fractions, right? They're going to answer all of those questions together or on their own. So they're going to answer it on their own. Then they're going to check each other. If they have the same answers for all of the questions, they'll bring it up and they say we have the same. I will check them. If they get them all right, they get to go over to the hoop and they get to shoot against each other. If they make, whoever makes it first gets the point. Then they go on to the next set of questions or next question and then they shoot again. And they're facing off against each other to see who can get the most points for that day and win um, against each other, if that makes sense. So like Jimmy and Jayla are gonna answer question number one, check their answers. If they're the same, they bring them up to me. If they are correct, they both get to go shoot. If only one of them is correct, that one person that got it correct gets to go shoot. If they make it, they get a point. If they don't, they just go to the next question. And they're gonna do that maybe for like six questions every day. So this is a great way to review all of the different skills. So like maybe Monday I'm doing fractions, Tuesday multiplication, Wednesday division, and I have just like six, seven questions that they do each and every time and they're facing off against each other. And then if you win, you get a point, and now the next day you're gonna go play against somebody else. And your goal is to have the most points at the end of the week, the end of the month, however long you do this challenge um, to be the winner. So just quick faces off. Now, for the, as far as bringing a hoop into the classroom, what I um, have done previously is my sons, they have like a little outdoor basketball hoop that I just bring in with a small ball for them to shoot. So you could do something like that. You could just use a trash can with a wadded up piece of paper. Do something like that. You could go outside or go to your local or your school's gym and actually use a real hoop. So there's many ways that you can bring the actual basketball in to the thing. Now, there is not actually a lot of basketball being played in either that reading or that math challenge because really what they're doing is answering the questions and working really hard on the skill that you're working on and then maybe they get to take one shot. But because they want to be able to take that shot, because they really want to get a chance to shoot, they're going to work extra hard on that question that you gave them because they want to get it right, right? So if you just gave them the packet and there was no shooting involved, no March Madness, they might just like half hardly go through it. Like who cares? A lot of kids don't even care about grades anymore. So it's just like, how do I get them motivated to care about this? March Madness is a way to get them motivated to care about it because they know that they're gonna go get to shoot against their partner or they're gonna get to go into the face off or they're gonna earn an MVP point. They are gonna be motivated to work really hard to get that question right. So they're going to be learning in the process. Some other things extras that you could do throughout March Madness to just kind of add a little um, shabam, whatever, to your <laughs> week. I don't know if that's the correct word, but you know what I mean. One thing that we did last year is we would have the two third grade classrooms and we were doing that math competition. And so they would get to face off against the two um, third grade classroom so like my classroom would face off against the other classroom on Friday at the end of the week so anytime you won a point in the math competition you got to be on the list to face off against the other classroom 
Um, so you could do something like that where literally it's just really fun. If you, you know, win the fractions for the week, you get to go and you get to play against Miss Weisenberger's um, other students in your real gym. And we would do that Friday right before the end of the day. So it was just like a quick, fun way to get out of the classroom. We also, I mean, we are on the same campus as our high schoolers, so some people are not, but we have our varsity basketball team come play our kids at the end of the um, whole March Madness unit. They got to come and they got to play knockout versus the high schoolers. Um, and the whole point was you had to work really hard during your reading prep and during your math prep in order to get to do that um, thing. So you can do things like that to just add some little extra incentives along the way. If you want to, there's also some great read alouds like Jabari Jumps that you can read throughout this unit to just get students really into it. So if you head to the friendlyteacher.com forward slash March Madness, um, I will link that below as well. So friendlyteacher.com forward slash March Madness, you can read everything that I'm doing um, as well as see pictures and examples and things like that to make March Madness happen in your classroom. So go ahead and make it happen. Oh,